Now this is the long range version. It has these 19 inch aerodynamic wheels. These wheels give more cushion. There's plenty of more forgiveness here for potholes if you're going over any kind of bumps. I think that you're going to find it a lot less forgiving than if you had the 20 inch tires. Now the range is also better with these rims because you're getting a lighter wheel and that means that you're going to have less rolling resistance so naturally you're going to get a better range with less weight. Point out while you're driving this Tesla Model S is that the model it has a lot of good insulation the inside of it, it handles better i noticed it's more of a quieter ride and i think that's because of things that are done in the windows there's like dual pane insulation here if you look over here you can see that right here the thickness of these windows here you see there's like two layers right here and i think tesla did a good job of putting together the insulation so that there's not a lot of road noise road noise is something that is luxurious if you don't hear it from the inside of the cabin. You know, the car, when Tesla made it, they made it one of the most lowest drag efficient cars on earth. It has a 0.208 drag efficiency. So that means that the cars really sloped low and you can see how all throughout the design of it, the front of it slopes real sleek like that and it goes back towards the middle of it and it just cuts through the air and it's very very low drag efficient and looks like a missile I think like it looks like a little rocket it looks pretty cool now the back side of it the design side of this side it's more wider than what the previous model s was so you could see my hand is right here and how much of a flare there is in the fender out in the back they also added different kind of design points here with the back diffuser so that it would cut the air up better and that it would be more aerodynamic. Let's talk about the storage space of this. You can see that there's a lot of space back here. I've got two ice boxes back here. There's 28 cubic feet of storage in here and you have the front and rear trunk so you can also store things up front and if you want you could fold down the seats so it's like a luxury car but you can also fit a bike inside you know we're gonna do some shopping out here and we're gonna fit a lot of groceries and things in this back seat too so that's just a heads up there's a lot of different things that you could put in here camera gear is what I've got here right now currently my wife's just chilling up front there say hi hey I want to talk about the different kinds of safety that's built into this car. The safety of this car is really critical. When you're driving, you want a car to offer you a lot of high impact protection. And this design, it's all built from a high strength architecture. On the bottom of this car, there's a floor mounted battery and that's going to protect the occupants from impacts and gives a low rollover risk. All right, so my first initial impression of this yoke steering wheel is that it's like a fighter plane. Like, as soon as I got into it and grabbed the top of the steering wheel, it's like, wait a second, hold on, there's no wheel up here. It's like a yoke steering wheel. So, you know, it gets used to, you get some learning to do with this yoke steering wheel, but it's very manageable. You can drive with it. You just got to relearn it. And it's more of the tighter turns, I think, that's going to be a challenge. But that's okay. Like, it'll just be able to you know be driven you know there's all the buttons here on the steering wheel there's haptic feedback so the buttons are gonna vibrate under your touch kind of like an iPhone will you know it's kind of like a touch sensitive kind of a button here and driving it I mean it feels very solid I think they made this steering wheel really bulky just because it's kind of pulling you back when you hit the um, you know when you hit the accelerator because there's a lot of torque that's available okay so with this wheel I think the best way to turn it is to just use like a one-handed steering or you could just use it kind of like two hands when you're going around corners and not like you look up front here you can see that the road is kind of turning and just as it turns you just use both hands and you're able to 
properly maneuver each turn around here. Okay, I got to get on the freeway up here in a little bit, so I'm going to give it some little acceleration here. And let's see here. We'll get past this Nissan here, no problem. <clears throat> okay, very accelerating, very good, good response here. Okay, now I'm going to get onto this interstate here. Okay, right here, and it's all navigating me right here. So when I turned the signal, the blinker turned off, and it's going good so far. Okay, just taking me a minute to learn this feedback here from the buttons, and I can make this. Okay, let's get it. Okay, so I'm gonna get in this left hand lane. And then I gotta get in one more here. Okay, see? All right, and then we're gonna go and enter on to the on ramp here. I'm just showing you some of the driving here and how we're gonna get going and we're about 11 miles to the next destination, so I'll show you how these new tech vehicles, this tech savvy vehicle is going to be merging onto the freeway and handling the steering situations here. Okay, good. We got this Mazda up front. We're going to go past him and catch up. Okay, yes, we're keeping up with the speed of traffic already. See, we're doing like 70. That's good. Yeah, I like that. And that acceleration comes in handy. All right, so you see that I'm turning the yoke and like this kind of a turn, it's no problem. It's nice, beefy, I think it's a safe kind of a pattern here. It's a real thick handle. I think that this yoke steering wheel, it's flat on the bottom here, but it's nice and beefy right up top here. So I like that. I like that feel. Okay, so I got to get over and uh, let's see if anyone's going to let me over here. It's nice feel. I've been getting used to these blinkers. Um, the wheel, it's its really a different experience with this, but you know, it can be learned. You just got to be safe with it. You got to be careful with, you know, making sure you're driving good. Okay, there you go. This is an interesting view right here. It's got all the cameras here so you can see your blind spots. I mean, it's good to turn your head too, but you can see that, see, look at the pillar here, this side pillar here. There's a huge pillar here. And the pillar, it's nice because it is gonna give more safety to, to the vehicle. But I'll talk about safety in a bit. But so far, this yoke, it's very usable. It's very good. talk about something like about the car as far as the supercharging. When you're taking the car into a supercharger, the lower the battery is, the better the charge rate is. So if you have, oh, about 20% battery left on the pack, 
then it's gonna charge up a lot faster than if you were to take it to a supercharger and charge it up at 80%. So it's not consistent what it is with the charging rate, and it's recommended to go to the supercharger with less of a charge. Globally, there's 25,000 superchargers for the Tesla network. So Tesla's mission, Tesla's goal is to give people the freedom to travel anywhere. And I think that with the built-in system that you have globally, you can really travel anywhere freely. Since I've taken off earlier in the day, it was starting at 290 miles. I'm at 268 miles of range on the pack. So I have quite a bit of range still available to drive around and experience range and everything. Now talking about the inside of this car, the infotainment center and everything else, I'm not going to go too in depth with it. There's a lot of things available in it, such as Netflix, you can access YouTube, you can access a lot of things throughout here and it's all broken down. Sirius, XM, Spotify, a lot of different kinds of features through here that you can play with. The top glass of there, it's not too hot. When there's sun beaming down here in this Texas area, I was figuring that it's gonna warm up my head a bit, but no, they did a good job of ceramic tinting the top side of this. So I don't think you're gonna experience any kind of discomfort. And it's kind of a nice scenery, just being able to look up and see trees and the moonlight or whatever else you may see up above.